morning, children of God. Morning. Welcome to worship today. Uh, first thing I want to mention so I, I don't forget, we have three of our shut-ins having birthdays in September. Dorothy Crow's birthday is September 3rd, and there's some more of these sheets out on that, the table where the guest book is that has addresses, so September 3rd is Dorothy's birthday. And then um, later in the month, Helen Buckles turns 99, and Edna turns 100. So you want to try and remember everybody on their birthdays if you can. All of them, I mean, all of our shut-ins are special people, and it really helps them feel connected to the congregation. Yes? Well, this is an important day, too, because it's Cord's ninth birthday. Whoa! Maestro, we need a song. You want to play for Cord? Anybody else? We need to... Okay, let's play for... Oh, no. That was yesterday. <laughs> you know, for our wedding anniversary, we did something really special. Jack brought home Subway sandwiches. <laughs> Birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday, dear Cord, happy birthday to you. Thank you. <laughs> oh, gosh. Um, <laughs> let's see. The announcements are on a separate, for the most part, are on a separate uh, sheet, including who's, who does what in September, an announcement about Helen's birthday celebration. Confirmation begins a week from Wednesday. God's Work Our Hands comes up later in September. Uh, the men's group is going to start up on the 7th. On the 11th, there's a backpack blessing. Whew, lots of cool stuff going on, so praise the Lord, it's exciting, and we're going to keep adding as we can, so anyway, be sure you check all those things out. Is there anything I need to add or any announcements I've missed? All right, looking good as far as I can tell. Let's begin worship then with our confession and forgiveness on page three. Please stand as you're able. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not followed your path, but have chosen our own way. Instead of putting others before ourselves, we long to take the best seats at the table. When met by those in need, we have too often passed by on the other side. Set us again on the path of life. Save us from ourselves and free us to love our neighbors. Amen. Hear the good news. God does not deal with us according to our sins, but delights. He delights in granting pardon and mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. You are free to love as God loves. Amen. Our hymn is 845.
stand as you're able. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. The day is found on the front of the celebrate insert. We pray together. O oh God, you resist those who are proud and give grace to those who are humble. Give us the humility of your Son that we may embody the generosity of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. The first reading says from Proverbs 25, verses 6 through 7. Do not put yourself forward in the king's presence, or stand in the place of the great, for it is better to be told, come up here, than to be put lower in the presence of a noble. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today's psalm is Psalm 112. We'll repeat the refrain at the board of the R. Hallelujah, happy are they who fear the Lord and have great delight in God's commandments. The righteous are merciful and full of compassion. Wealth and riches will be in their house, and their righteousness will last forever. Light shines in the darkness for the upright. The righteous are merciful and full of compassion. It is good for them to be generous in lending and to manage their affairs with justice. For they will never be shaken. The righteous will be kept in everlasting remembrance. The righteous are merciful and full of compassion. They will not be afraid of any evil rumors. Their heart is steadfast, trusting in the Lord. Their heart is established and will not shrink until they see their desire upon their enemies. They have given freely to the poor, and their righteousness stands fast forever. They will hold up their head with honor. The wicked will see it and be angry. They will gnash their teeth and pine away. The desires of the wicked will perish. The righteous and merciful and full of compassion. The second reading is from Hebrews chapter 13. Let mutual love continue. Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers, for by doing that some have entertained angels without knowing it. Remember, those who are in prison as though you were in prison with them, those who are being tortured as though you yourselves were being tortured. Let marriage be held in honor by all, and let the marriage bed be kept undefiled. For God will judge fornicators and adulterers, 
Keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have. For he has said, I will never leave you or forsake you. So we can say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can anyone do to me? Remember, your leaders, those who spoke the word of God to you, consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Through him, then, let us continually offer a sacrifice of praise to God. That is the fruit of lips that confess his name. Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand as you're able for the reading of the gospel. We begin with the gospel acclamation in the middle of page five. Alleluia, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart. Alleluia. The gospel according to Luke, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. On one occasion, when Jesus was going to the house of a leader of the Pharisees to eat a meal on the Sabbath, they were watching him closely. When he noticed how the guests chose the places of honor, he told them a parable. When you are invited by someone to a wedding banquet, do not sit down at the place of honor in case someone more distinguished than you has been invited by your host. And the host who invited both of you may come and say to you, give this person your place. And then in disgrace, you would start to take the lowest place. But when you are invited, um, sit down at the lowest place so that when your host comes, he may say to you, friend, move up higher. Then you will be honored in the presence of all who sit at the table with you. For all who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. He said also to the one who had invited him, when you give a, a luncheon or a dinner, do not invite your friends or your brothers or your relatives or rich neighbors in case they may invite you in return, and you would be repaid. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, and the blind, and you will be blessed because they cannot repay you, for you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. You may be seated. Any kids to come forward? Hi there. And who do you have? Whoa. What's the baby's name? Well, I have a question for you. What has one head, one foot, and four legs? One head, one foot, and four legs. I see your baby. Yes. That's pretty. No, no, no ideas? Okay, well, let me show you. This has one head, one foot, and four legs. Because one end of the table is considered the head of the table, and the other end of the table is considered the foot of the table. And there's four legs that hold it up. Pretty clever, huh? In our gospel lesson today, it talks about sitting at places of honor, and that would be the head of the table. And it also talks about sitting at places that are lowest in honor or in status, and that would be the foot of the table. So this is a story about how we need to humble ourselves before God and not think of ourselves as being more important than what we are. And because God also humbled himself when he became man to die for our sins. So that's kind of the idea of the table. It has a head and a foot, 
And Jesus said to pick the, the lowest place, and your host might invite you to come up to a higher place, and that's a good thing. But if you take a higher place and your host tells you to go down to the lower place, that's pretty embarrassing. So, because God loves us and takes care of us, and we know that he's the most humble of all and gives us that example, I thought maybe a spoon would help you remember this lesson. Do you want a spoon? So let's have a prayer, okay? Dear Lord, thank you for loving us always, for being humble enough to come and be our Savior. Help us to follow your example and to love others like you do. In Jesus' name, amen. Treats anyone? Or... do, don't they? Did everybody get one? I've got some. Oh, you have bug spray? Well, that'll help, won't it? Keep some mosquitoes off. Do you? But you still got a mosquito bite? Yeah, they get you sometimes. They know where they're at. You haven't been sprayed at. Everybody got one? Okay. <laughs> Thanks for coming up. mercy and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. There are a lot of things that we don't know about Jesus. However, we do know that he was welcome to many meals. For instance, the wedding at Cana, where Jesus changed tall jars of water into the finest wine. And Levi, the tax collector, after God called him, to, or after Jesus called him, Levi invited Jesus to dinner, along with other sinners and tax collectors. Peter's mother-in-law was very ill, and after Jesus healed her, she got up and served a meal. Jesus was a guest at the home of Martha and Mary. And Jesus observed his final Passover with his disciples. Well, in today's gospel, we find Jesus in the house of a leader of the Pharisees where he'd been invited to dinner. Now this seems suspicious because Jesus was often at odds with the Pharisees. But here's the catch, it's found in verse one. It was the Sabbath. And the verse one says that they were watching Jesus closely. So they were kind of waiting to see if Jesus was gonna step out of bounds. But while Jesus was being watched by the Pharisees, which I'm sure he knew good and well what their motives were, Jesus was observing the other people at the meal. As Jesus watched the Pharisees' guests, he noticed that the guests tend to gravitate to the head of the table, or to the, what they, the scriptures call it, the places of honor. Now, to put this in a little cultural perspective, I have a quote here from the Dictionary of Biblical Imagery. It says, banquets are loaded with messages about who is up and who is down in status, who is in and who is out of the social or political circle. Invitations signify being in. Proximity to the host and the amount and quality of the food and drink offered indicate status. Refusal to attend a banquet is a powerful negative social message defying the authority and honor of the host. An invitation in those days was a big deal. Any invitation to a banquet. And it wasn't just to enjoy the dinner, but to improve one's social standing or one's status in society. However, Jesus tells them not to sit at the places of honor when they are the invited guest. In fact, they should, he recommends they look for the lowest places and sit there. After all, you know, you don't know what the guest list is and 
somebody that the host thinks is more important may have been invited. And it's the host's prerogative in that culture to pick where people are going to sit, move people around the way he feels the order should be. So to be told to move to the lowest place would negatively affect one's status. It would be better to be moved to a higher place and be honored. This volunteer seating arrangement is basic banquet etiquette according to Jesus. And Jesus doesn't stop with what guests should do. He also talks about who those guests should be. He says, don't invite friends or brothers or relatives or rich neighbors. I mean, that's the obvious thing to do. Instead, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, and the blind, and you will be, rep re you will be blessed because they cannot repay you. That's basic etiquette for hosting a party, God's way. Now, the book Palestine in the Time of Jesus kind of gives us an idea of why that's significant. All persons invite their social network because they have something to gain by entertaining such a group. Invitations, favors, power, and honor. And this honor and shame and status power net was a really significant thing in their culture. But Jesus changes that. He says, invite the outcasts, the nobodies, the social rejects to the party. Jesus basically takes their culture and just throws it out the window. He replaces it with the idea of God's honor. Because in God's book of etiquette, honor is not based on the person's qualifications, but entirely on God's mercy. Consider how Jesus changed those banquet policies of his culture. Guests should humble themselves rather than desire the seats of honor. And instead of inviting, inviting relatives and family and rich and friends, invite the poor and the crippled, the lame and the blind. God proves, God proves this idea of honor by inviting all of us with our sins and our flaws to his banquet table. Jesus was the ultimate guest on earth. He was fully God and fully human, and yet he humbled himself unto death, even death on the cross. And because of Jesus' death and resurrection, eternal life is available to all who believe. Jesus humbled himself so we could receive honor. There's a place for all of us in God's kingdom. Faith and salvation are not our doing, but purely a gift of God's grace. Paul reminds the church of Ephesus, for by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is a gift of God, not the results of works, so that no one may boast. This psalm today reminds us to give freely to the poor, and Hebrews tells us that by entertaining or by showing hospitality to strangers, we may entertain angels without even being aware of it. Becoming a Christian is an act of faith through God's grace and mercy. But being a Christian takes work. It takes work like loving persons whom the world rejects. And it includes things like giving our time and our money and our talents to help others. And Christian living includes gathering to worship, prayer, praise, read scripture, and to serve God, the God we love, above all else. At times, being a Christian is countercultural. God's way isn't always the way that people expect. Now, today at Zion Lutheran, we had two students that were confirmed in their faith in the triune God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And it is truly amazing when somebody says yes to God. And I'm excited because in less than two weeks, in that short time, we have eight students, eight students that will begin their confirmation journey here at Christ. That's fabulous. They'll be gaining a deeper understanding of Scripture and in and the teachings of the church. Now, like a graduation, confirmation sort of a time when one door shuts and a new adventure begins. But instead of uh, graduating away from the church and never coming back, it's a, 
It's, the real joy is in continued learning about scripture and participating actively in the life of the church and in God's work. Paul explains the process like this. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put the ways of childhood behind me. As we experience life, as we continue studying God's word, we mature in our understanding of God's incredible love and sacrifice that was made through Jesus Christ for our sins so that we could be forgiven. And regardless of where you are in your walk with Christ, consider these words from Hebrews. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Through him, then, let us continually offer a sacrifice of praise to God that is the fruit of lips that confess his name. Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. And to quote Martin Luther, this is most certainly true. Amen. We continue with hymn 583. Oh, should be 583. I mean... Please stand as you're able. We continue by confessing our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, 
was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Prayers of intercession are found on the back of the celebrate insert. Trusting in God's extraordinary love, let us come near to the Holy One in prayer. For the church and its leaders, we pray. Uphold all deacons, pastors, and bishops who serve and teach your people. Awaken in your church a spirit of invitation that reaches ever outward. Merciful God, for the well-being of creation and its inhabitants, we pray. Stir in us reverent awe for the beauty of the natural world, for oceans and lakes, rivers and streams, forests and deserts. Merciful God, for the nations and peoples of the world, we pray. Sustain the efforts of those who pursue justice and equity for all. Defend and accompany all immigrants and refugees and all who are persecuted for their ethnic origin or religious beliefs. Merciful God, for all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, we pray. Be present with those who live in isolation or fear, especially those who are incarcerated or detained. Comfort all who are sick or grieving, especially we pray for Joshua and Rod and Irvin, and Everett, and Adam, and Tammy, and Jan, and Gary, and Riley, and Perry, and Elijah, and Joanne, and Brett, and Tragen, and Laverta, and Howard, and Don. Merciful God, for this congregation and its ministries, we pray, prepare children, teachers, and youth ministry directors for a new year of learning. Embolden our witness to invite others to the table. Merciful God, for all the saints who confess God's name, we give thanks. May we cling to the promise of our risen Savior, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Merciful God, receive the prayers of your children, Merciful God, and hold us forever in your steadfast love. Through Christ, Jesus Christ, our holy wisdom. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And you may share Christ's peace with each other. be seated.
please stand. the offering prayer together. Merciful God, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Our hymn is 708. Peace. Pray for your neighbor. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.